Hello everybody, this is Warrior Dan, and today we're talking about Renzo Racing. What precisely is Renzo Racing? Renzo Racing is, well, it's a completely unique, fun for the family, kart racing game filled with colorful worlds, easily abusable power-up cubes, and plenty of level-specific environmental dangers. With such an engaging premise, it's a wonder no major publisher has yet made a franchise out of this simple concept. Oh, wait, hmm. Now the first thing I noticed when loading up the game is how insanely loud the menu music was. I have the volume on my headset by default set to a reasonably low setting, but listening to the menu music I felt like that one guy who gets in his friend's car only to find out his friend listens to his car radio at max volume and max bass. Also, why do Mario Kart inspired games like this forget what was indisputably the key foundation upon which the entire game relied, being multiplayer support? For some reason, Renzo Racing is exclusively a single player only endeavor, with the AI being the only competition. For some reason, Renzo Racer is exclusively a single player only and local multiplayer only endeavor, with the AI being the main form of competition. I'm not entirely sure why they didn't go for an online component, because this is the kind of game that would have done very well in an online setting. But, for whatever reason, they didn't, and that's interesting. You don't even get the option to host a uh, private game yourself. The game follows the tried-and-true Mario Kart design philosophy of playing through and subsequently winning kart tournaments in order to unlock new playable levels and characters. Depending on their final placement in each level within a tournament, the player and the NPCs are awarded a set number of points. The better your position is at the end of the level, the more points you earn. At the end of the tournament, the total number of points are added up, and the character with the most points wins. So it's perfectly possible that you could end up not placing in first place in several, even potentially not placing first in any round, and you could still end up in first place, depending on how consistently you make it into at least second or third place. It largely depends on how consistently or inconsistently the other AI bots perform around you. One of the things that made the Mario Kart game so iconic was the visuals and layout of each level. Here in Renzo Racing, the visual aesthetic and level flow tend to be okay. There's really not much here to be considered remarkable. The tracks do have some nice variations, like a water park level where you basically slide around the whole time, and there's a decent forest themed one. But then there are some others like this rainbow road knockoff that feel unnecessarily derivative. It's like the game couldn't fully commit to being its own thing without strictly adhering to what Mario had already done too. It's worth noting that for some reason the textures on a lot of the foreground and background set pieces are really low quality. This is especially jarring because the character models all seem to be rendered in high definition, making a very notable contrast. Now, Renzo Racing does feature both keyboard and controller support, which is nice because while I prefer to play almost all my games exclusively on keyboard, I am aware there are those who prefer to play racing games with a more traditional controller setup. The problem is that the keyboard commands aren't all that responsive. There does seem to be some kind of input lag in regards to control, as oftentimes when I play, especially when I was making some sort of turn, left or right, the game would, for some reason, not immediately register the command to turn, so I was often left smacking into walls unintentionally. And I usually find I can bump into walls and objects all on my own, so it's not like I really need more ways to screw up. Renzo Racing is currently listed on Steam at the price of $4.99 USD, which is not a bad price point, I just honestly wish that the game had a bit more to it. Content-wise, it has more than enough to warrant even higher than $4.99, but quality-wise, it's a bit of a hard sell. In relatively high-speed games like first-person shooters or racing games, you need highly responsive controls and at least good quality visuals. Here, both are painfully average. If you were already thinking about buying it, I'm not going to discourage you, but if you do, definitely take the time to give the developers your feedback, and hopefully they'll continue to improve on this game over time. In the case of a lot of games like this, these games can get better over time if the developer or developers take the time to do so, and player feedback has a big impact on that. So if you want to help this game or other indie games really continue to improve, instead of walking away entirely, try to leave some feedback first and tell the developers what you like and what you don't like, because that's the only way change is going to happen. I usually like to hope for the best even when certain games don't put their best foot forward during the initial release window. So is Renzo Racing worth buying? Yeah, not really at the moment. If they continue to add new content updates over time, quite possibly, but for the moment I'm giving it a thumbs down. That wraps us up for this video. Let me know what you think about Renzo Racing in the comments section down below. And if you like this video, definitely give it a like. It definitely helps out, as YouTube will be more likely to recommend this to other people too. If you want to see other videos like this one in the future, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button and opt into getting notifications so you can be among the first to know when a new video goes live. This is Warrior Dan signing out. Stay awesome, everybody, and peace out. Woo! <laughs>